Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, yes it is time to revisit the 90s mystery custom built PC. If you guys missed the last video, just a little recap here, this machine was very generously donated to me by a viewer who goes by the name The Desert Lad. Thank you very much once again. And although he originally told me that this was a machine from the 1980s, it turned out to be a mid 90s Cyrix 6x86 custom built PC, which is still super awesome. Now in the original video, I was not able to fully boot this thing up because because I did not have an AT based keyboard because yes, the motherboard in here is an AT form factor motherboard and unfortunately we had to end it there. But I did say that I was gonna order one of these right here, an AT to PS2 adapter and it came in finally. So we're gonna be able to power this thing on today, get past that keyboard error and see what's on the hard drive. I'm hoping there's something on here. It'd be really cool if there was an OS install. I'm gonna guess Windows 95, but perhaps, you know, it's something else. Who knows? And maybe there's nothing on it. If there's nothing on it, we will install something on it because, well, that's what we do around these parts. Before we get to that, though, I do want to highlight one very important thing that a couple of you guys pointed out in the original video, and that is that the graphics card, the original graphics card that was in here, was not seated properly. I didn't notice this while I was recording, but once that was pointed out to me, I went and looked back at the footage, and I thought... Yeah, I think it is. So I went ahead and put the original graphics card back in here, made sure it was seated properly, turned on the machine, and it worked just fine. So that entire video, that entire process we went through of trying to figure out what that postcode was, why it wasn't booting up, and I ended up changing the GPU out, it could have been solved by just reseeding the graphics card. Hey, I guess that's what happens when you overthink things, right? But you know what? I'm glad that we opened this thing up anyways because it was cool to explore around inside. I've personally never owned one of these Cyrix 6x86 base systems before, and it needed to be cleaned too. I mean, especially the power supply. As you guys saw, that thing was full of dust. So I was glad to open it up and to explore it. So let's go ahead and grab our AT to PS2 adapter here, turn the computer around, and we can plug this in to the AT connector on the board right there. Now as for the PS2 keyboard that we're going to use, well, there's really only one possible answer. We thought this was a 1980s computer originally, right? So, why not make it 1980s related somehow? Yes, we're going to be using the Beast, the Titan, the amazing, the beautiful IBM Model M 1391401. Just amazing keyboard. As for the mouse, we're just using this, you know, this old Dell PS2 mouse. I mean, you know, who who cares? And there we go. We got lights on the keyboard. And Windows 98, okay. So that gives us a time frame that this was still used in 1998. And now it's going through the new hardware that it's found. I think I just saw Comic Sans on the title bar. That makes me very concerned. Oh no, I think that is Comic Sans. I'm seeing a couple of things. I'm seeing two Internet Explorer icons. We've got Netscape Navigator, but we've got a, like a theme applied. I mean, check this out. These icons up here. First of all, there's an icon on the desktop called Hard Drive, which is not normally there. Uh, I would assume this would open up my computer. It might just be renamed. The recycle bin icon is different. I have no idea what this is supposed to say. So let's just browse around here. First thing I want to do is change the desktop wallpaper. So we got it looks like some, oh yeah, these are like non-standard wallpapers. Oh my gosh, what the, what is this? <laughs> what the, what is? <laughs> oh, that might be some, I think this is somebody's name. I might have to blur that out. Yeah, there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of wallpapers in here. Internet Explorer wallpaper, J. It's just the letter J. Why would you want that as a wallpaper? Plus, okay. So we could have Microsoft Plus installed. Red blocks. Dang, this looks like, look at how this looks, dude. Oh my gosh. It's giving me like a virtual boy vibe. Yeah, we're going to spend the entire rest of the, the entire video on the desktop wallpapers in here. I mean, look, there's so many. Look at all these. Un okay, untitled. We have to check that out. Okay, these are clearly made in Microsoft Paint. And oh yeah, there's, okay, so it wants to log on. Connect to... 
So we've got win logo. It's like a Windows 3 one style wallpaper. Yosemite, 256 color, first boot, arcade, arches. I think we're going to set it to win logo. So apparently the name of the person who used this computer is Terry. So that's the user account there. It just auto logged in, by the way. Didn't have to put in a password or anything. Microsoft Office, Wolfenstein 3D. New fold. Oh, come on. You got me excited. Wolf. You can't name a folder Wolf 3D and not have Wolfenstein installed. What is wrong with you? Okay. We got QuickBooks. This might have been used as a business computer. Best of Entertainment. Ooh, okay. So we got the Best of Entertainment pack on here. Yeah, check that out. I'm trying to click on this to launch it and it's not letting me. Microsoft Word. Okay, well, I can just press Enter to launch it. So now we're launching Microsoft Word. Okay, so... The license information there indicated that this was indeed a business computer, and oh my gosh, it recovered a Word document. Oh my gosh, so this is a letter to Santa, apparently. Somebody wrote this, so this was probably their kids, I guess. Dear Santa, I am not in location tonight. I am in this other location at my Nana and Papa's house. Their address is, their address, at the top of the hill. Love, and then their names. Oh my gosh. That is amazing that it was able to recover that. I mean, because, you know, when was the last time this thing was powered on and used? I mean, that's insane. Well, I'm saving this for sure. We're going to do a control S on that because <laughs> the fact that it that it recovered it is, is amazing. And oh yeah, we got a ton of documents on here. So we can check the dates here on these documents. I see 12697 Christmas party. You know, that's generic enough, so I don't have to blur that out. Christmas party 12697. So that gives us a time frame. Let's just save this as the recovered document. Oh man, this is going to be amazing to explore. Yeah, this is hands down one of my favorite things to do when I get any vintage computer is just to go through and see what was on it and try to figure out when this thing was last powered up and used because this is like a literal time capsule. I mean, if we go into my documents here, let's go uh, to this hard drive icon that does open up my computer. So they just renamed the my computer icon to hard drive. Uh, so we'll go into the C drive here. It looks like we have a DOS installation on here. We've got a DOS folder. We have a million temp files. Oh my gosh. Let's look for command.com. There it is. So we got a DOS installation on here. And I'm honestly guessing, like, the fact that we had... Uh, what was that? That was in the start menu here. There was a folder that seemed like it was a Windows 3.1 program group. Yeah, applications right here, which has QBasic and learning MS-DOS quick reference inside. And applications was a default program group in Windows 3.1. So this very well could have been upgraded from 3.1 to 95 and then to 98. Okay, we have a Win95 folder on the hard drive. That's telling me that, yep, these are the setup files. So I'm trying to, because if this was built in 96, you would have probably got 90 Windows 95, unless you already had a Windows 3.1 installation lying around. I mean, the fact that we've got this program group in here called applications leads me to believe this used to run Windows 3.1. Perhaps the hard drive was in an old computer and then it was moved to this one, then they upgraded to 95 and then to 98. Because we can confirm from that Win95 folder on the hard drive that it ran in Windows 95 before, otherwise why would it be there? And I'm seeing some HP related files, HP DeskJet, HP Scheduler, maybe HP Info. Oh yeah, I want to see what the deal is with these two IE icons on the on the desktop. So this one here. Okay, so we've got a plus folder in Program Files, Microsoft Internet iExplore.exe. So that's a shortcut. And this one here isn't a shortcut, but it is. I mean, it's probably just the like the IE icon you can turn on from Control Panel would be my guess. IE five okay this is a customized version of internet explorer Ooh, what version of netscape navigator do we have netscape navigator 3 95 96 man well so far looking at i haven't sorted the files in the documents folder and i haven't even opened up the documents folder yet so of course 2022 is going to be the document that i just made and 2002 june 17th 2002 at 10 32 a.m is when the last document in the my documents folder was modified and the oldest document in here 
is from December 9th, 1996, and it's called New Microsoft Word Document. Yep, that's just a new Microsoft Word document, just <laughs> nothing in here, just saved blank and untouched since December of 96. So, okay, new folder, I don't think there's anything in here. This does not look like uh, anything. Yep. There's nothing. What is, okay, I wanna figure out what this is. Okay, this is my network place, yeah, this is my network places, but they just renamed the, uh, probably one of one of Terry's kids renamed the icon here on the desktop by mistake and couldn't figure out how to, how to change it back. AOL Instant Messenger, okay, I wanna see, let's see if somebody's aim handle is still in here. Like if it was gonna auto log in, obviously it's not gonna be able to anymore, but let's just see what happens. Sign on, connecting, it's not gonna be able to connect. Oh, I thought it was gonna like show you the like username in here. That would have been really cool. Oh, there it is, right there. Let's go to setup here. This is version 3.0. Got the default host in here, so none of that was changed. Um, buddy, I oh, there's the buddy list. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh my gosh, that's the buddy list. I, I can't believe. Oh, that's awesome. So here's all this person's buddies that they were talking to, and it looks like they were all just under buddies. They didn't sort them in these in these categories. You know, part of me doesn't want to wipe this hard drive, but I mean, I know that I have to. Come on, I mean, there's so much personal data on here. This this has to be wiped. This is kind of like the last hurrah. Like we're going through here, we're seeing what's on it. If there is anything like a program or something. Um, that I've never seen for like the 777 slots. I have no idea what this is. I mean, if there's anything um, that could be valuable that's not personal data, like a program or something um, that like there's no copy of anywhere else, then yeah, I, I will archive that obviously. Uh, I have no problem doing that. But I mean, when it comes to personal data, there's no exceptions. Uh, I mean, you gotta make sure that stuff is wiped. So what, what is this? 777 slots is a three wheel five playline slot machine game Ultis, I thought that said Ubisoft, Ultisoft Incorporated in Central Point, Oregon. You've reached the end of your evaluation of 777 or 777 slots. Evaluation is limited to five uses of the program or 500 spins, whatever comes first. Okay, so if it was the program uses. They only got the 189 spins. Okay, so yeah, we can't. We can't do anything else with it. Highly doubt you'll be able to activate it <laughs> uh, in 2022 here. So. We looked at my documents. Let's look at the Terry folder. Maybe this is this will have more documents in it. We've got a single file called Rave, modified February 21st, 2000. I don't know why it's like, that's the only thing in this folder here, but okay. Let us see what else. Oh yeah, let's go back into programs here. So Wolf 3D, unfortunately there's nothing in here. AOL Instant Messenger, we already took a look at. Oh yeah, here's that HP DeskJet software, HP Internet Connection Center, IBM via voice. Okay, enrollments. Oh yeah, and again, I can't, I, I, I cannot click to launch this. This is very, this is very interesting. I don't know how that's set up. I've not experienced that before with Windows 98. A small investment of your time will increase the accuracy of your speech recognition. Okay. Do I have a microphone that I could plug into here? Because this would be kind of cool to test out. All right. Let's... Don't do that. <laughs> All right. I'm going to turn this on again and not have it up super. So I'm going to record the room noise. Okay. And then we're going to continue and say, I'm testing my microphone setup. I am testing my microphone setup. Hey, that's much better, isn't it? Okay. Do I have a signal adapter? No, I do not. Microphone connection complete. Hooray. Say the displayed words as they are highlighted. Okay. Process. Process. Automatic. Automatic. Towards. Towards. Towards, towards, lastly, before, thousand, okay? Please complete quick training before continuing. I have never used this uh, program before. This is rather interesting. Click start, then dictate the sentence in the box. You should speak clearly to get the best recognition accuracy. Full stop. 
<laughs> okay, I just had to do that. I'm sorry. You should speak clearly to get the best recognition accuracy. Full stop. You need to say all punctuation symbols, comma, such as comma and full stop, comma, when you need them, full stop. All right, so I've been looking up some stuff about this IBM Via Voice program, and this is absolutely a speech recognition program. It's pretty awesome. It's from the late 90s. It was developed until the mid 2000s. I went through the microphone setup again and did it properly and everything this time. And so now we're going to go through, you must record 100 sentences before you can process or train your enrollment. Remember, training is the second step to complete the enrollment process. Training creates a personal speech file based on your speech to improve recognition. You know what? What the heck? Let's just do it. So we're not going to continue recording because, I mean, it will improve accuracy, as it says, but that's going to take, uh, I don't know, maybe I will, maybe I'll just subject myself <laughs> to sitting here and just recording all of these phrases. But we're going to go to train now, process your recordings and finish your enrollment. It takes 20 to 60 minutes, okay? So we'll do that because I definitely want to use this. I mean, this is pretty cool. What? Why is, no, 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 why is it doing this again? Don't tell me I'm gonna have to, there's no way, dude. I already set all of that up, what the heck, dude? <laughs> what? What the heck, what happened? What happened to my 100 sentences? What I was saying is there is an IBM video from the 80s that's on YouTube and it talks about speech recognition, but it was really neat. I mean, it was it, it was speech recognition on an older IBM PC from the 80s and it, it was like an advertisement for uh, actually it wasn't a product by then. It was like an initiative at IBM that they were working on. And so maybe this is what came from that. Yeah, I don't know what exactly it did. Um, <laughs> It says, please complete quick train. I mean, it's still running, but like, yeah, I just did all of this. What is it doing? Yeah, save the user information. Like, why? I, I, I don't understand what I did. It said it had to process. Why is it? I just closed out of quick training. All right, I'm, I'm getting tired of this taskbar auto hiding itself. <laughs> I've tried to deal with it for their whole video, but oh my gosh, it gets really annoying. I am not an auto hide taskbar kind of guy. I have pressed the right click button on the mouse. Like a few seconds ago. We're still waiting for it to... Yeah, the uh, hard drive. We've got a lot of hard drive activity going on. Okay. Properties. Auto hide off. Thank you. So it's still like, is the program... Oh, there we go. Okay. I don't want to go through this again. Do you want to save? Yes. I want to save user information. That hard drive is like, it is like the read write head is very active right now. Like, is it is it not responding or something? Let's open up. Yeah, it is not responding. I don't know what exactly it like, because it said, I mean, you guys saw it said like, hey, okay, it's got to process this. It'll take 20 to 60 minutes. Okay. And then I, it did that and it went back to the, we'll just start the setup wizard again. And I'm afraid if I kill the process, we're going to lose everything that we just did. So I think I'll just leave it there. Oh, and it's, oh my gosh. It just lost everything. Oh my gosh. That is really annoying. All right, well, I guess we'll come back to that uh, maybe a little bit later on because I'm kind of frustrated that I spent all that time setting that up and it just screwed up for whatever reason. It just didn't save any of that. So, okay, yeah, that's IBM Via Voice. Uh, when it works, it sounds like a really interesting program. Oh boy, okay, so we got Lotus Smart Suite, Lotus 1, 2, 3, yep. Net it now, starter edition. What is this? Read me and you got upgrade. So where's the actual program? The perfect web publishing companion to your Windows software application. Using Net it now SE, you can transform regular office documents into live web pages that users can view and print. Okay, it's licensed to work with Lotus Smart Suite. Okay, that makes sense. And we don't have a serial number. So it's interesting they've got Lotus and Microsoft Office on here. I guess they were perhaps switching from Lotus to Microsoft Office or 
perhaps from office to lotus oh my gosh the hard drive is spinning up like it is constant i mean like the hard drive light indicator is just on permanently is something running in the background or something oh my gosh look at all this stuff running in the background holy oh we got aim i mean they had a lot of stuff i'm gonna have to check their startup for like what on earth do they have starting up with their computer year 2000 oh boy you know they're serious when they put that in the help menu and so it gives you a background about y2k if you hadn't heard of it about four million times by then the net it now se dialog box opens when you print a document to the net it now se printer okay Let's see if it's even in here it might not be configured properly um oh sh what the heck that was slightly horrifying. I mean, that's the, oh, it just, pfft. there was an error printing to LPT1 for the printer. Now there's a problem printing due to an unknown system error. Okay, but this came up. Okay, so let's just save it to uh, C, waiting for print file. Okay, oh, uh, the entire, I think the entire system just locked up. Uh, yep, I think it did. I'm not hearing any hard drive activity now, and the hard drive light is completely off. And I can't do control alt delete. I can't even uh, turn on caps lock and num lock. Yep, we've locked up. All right, let's reset. Microsoft Windows 98. All right, so we're back, and I guess we're gonna try that again. Okay, select a folder in which you wanna build your document. Okay, we'll just put it to the C drive. Um, C. C Windows desktop. Folder isn't empty, yes. All right, so it appears to have done it. It should be on our desktop here. Oh, uh, preview.htm, jdoc, okay. And yeah, there it is. There's our amazing document there. I mean, I didn't realize it was JDoc and all that, but hey, that's pretty cool. Move in all those files, and then we'll move all of these right here. Let's just go through here just one more, just to make sure I touched on everything. Colorado Backup, I guarantee you has to do with the tape drive. Best of Entertainment Pack, I've covered on this channel before. And the last thing that we're not gonna check out is QuickBooks. I'm not gonna bother trying to get in, because I already know that there's gonna be all sorts of personal and just private info and uh, so I'm just gonna respect their privacy and not try to get in um, this will be wiped as I mentioned earlier on in this video with Derek's boot and nuke especially because QuickBooks Pro is on here which will contain employee information which will have personal identifiable information like social security numbers and all that kind of stuff so we're gonna definitely wipe this thing and I'm thinking we're gonna install NT4 on it because I don't have an NT4 system or a system running NT4 right now so yeah we'll do that if you guys want to see a video on that i mean i could definitely do it be sure to let me know what you think but as for now that's going to wrap it up for today's episode i really hope you guys enjoyed this one if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up get subscribed down below turn on notifications all that good stuff huge thank you again to the desert lad once again really appreciate your very generous donation to the channel and huge thanks to all of you guys for watching as always i will see you in the next video